Hi everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are, we are back again with our yet another OWASP project spotlight series. And this time, I have a very very interesting project, which is like the talk of the town, which people are wanting to know more about, which is OWASP LLM project, and this is related to AI, uh, which has been circulating for the past few months that I've been seeing. So I have Steve Wilson, who is the project leader for. Uh, um, this OSP LLM project, as well as he's also working as a chief product officer for uh, Contrast Security. Let me bring us in and get to know more about him and the project. Over to you, Steve. Hey, great to meet you. Thanks for having me on today. Thank you so much for agreeing to be part of this podcast. Awesome. Glad to be here. Yeah. So, um, Steve. Uh, would you like to share some information about you? Uh, so I, I've been chatting with you offline, but then I would really want people to know you first because that's where the main thing lies, where people get to know you as a project leader and what you do. And then we'll also talk about OWASP LLM project, that how exactly it started, how the idea came into existence. That's great. Uh, as you said at the top, I'm the chief product officer at Contrast Security. Probably a lot of people involved in OWASP know Contrast one way or another. Um, my colleague here at Contrast, uh, our CTO, Jeff Williams, was involved a lot with the early days at OWASP. And he actually encouraged me to put together this project. And um, over the past few months, I've been looking a lot at ways that we could start to use um, large language model technology. And, you know, if you're not familiar with large language models, that's the things underlying um, chat GPT, Google Bard, um, as well as um, a lot of these other things, uh, mid journey and things like that are all using language models to be the underpinning where computers start to really understand language, which is really, really cool. Things like GitHub Copilot as well. Um, but in getting into them and being in the AppSec community, I realized there was a, a growing concern that there were a lot of possible security issues with these. And in fact, we started to see more and more coverage in the news over the past few months of security issues with these um, people hacking the very public things like chat GPT and then people deploying their own versions and getting themselves in trouble one way or another. And so I came up with the idea of putting together an OWASP top 10 and um, I submitted it to the board back in May, um, got it approved. I, I honestly thought that we'd have 10 other people in the world who were interested in this. I felt that like it would be a fairly obscure topic. But um, lo and behold, um, we're about two months into the project now. We have about 450 people on the dedicated Slack channel on the OWASP Slack workspace working on this. Had well over a hundred really active contributors, and we're nearing the point of having you know one of the list out. This is totally amazing, and I'm sure many more people would be interested uh, to work on this project. There, there are so many amazing things which are um, uh, going to happen in the future. Uh, so, can you share where exactly this project is located, uh, and how exactly people can use this particular project? Sure. Um, so let's see. Let me see if I can actually share my screen just to uh, try this here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, oh, boy. All right. Maybe this. Let's see. All right. So. Um, all right, there we go. So this is the home page um, on the OWASP website for the LLM project. But you know, if you actually want to get involved, um, there are a couple things here. Obviously, on the OWASP Slack instance itself, we have a number of dedicated channels. If you just search for LLM, you'll find all of our channels and you'll find the, the main one there where you can get involved. Um, we've also been using the wiki features on the GitHub site to collaborate here. And you can see um, we have meetings every two weeks. We put up the meeting recordings and slide decks so everybody can be involved. Um, 
And you can see things like the charter that we have, and then um, we're basically running it like an agile development project. And so we set up a roadmap actually at the onset of the project that we've been working towards. Um, let's see if it loads here. There we go. Um, starting when we announced it in late May and basically running a set of two week sprints towards the target of having it ready at the end of this month. So. It's something where anybody can jump in. You can come jump in over here on the GitHub site and get involved. You can go over and jump on the Slack instance. Um, so there's a number of ways that people can get involved. And people have been involved with writing draft entries. At one point, we took um, uh, drafts. I think we had 43 suggested entries for the top 10. Um, then went through rounds of voting with everybody involved and have narrowed it down to a top 10. And now we're really in the process of tuning it. And so it's not too late at all to jump in. Um, we have a bit more work to do on tuning and polishing 1.0. So you can come and provide commentary. Um, the other thing we know is that this isn't a, a one and done thing. Just like with all OWASP top 10s, we expect this to... Um, mature and change over time. So really what we're trying to do is build a community that's capable of supporting this and pushing it forward, um, you know, periodically updating the list and refreshing it. And it's, it's such a fast moving space that I think that's going to be really important. I really, really love the idea, especially around the sprints, because I saw that uh, when it started, there was a list which actually completely changed over the period. And now the latest one is totally different yeah yeah it it's really funny the first version of the list honestly um i had an idea that i wanted to start on it i didn't know where to start and i went to chat gpt and i said make me a top 10 list for llms and it it knew what oasp was it knew what a top 10 list was and what came out looked like a top 10 list but it looked really boring and so I copy and pasted 10 articles in there on LLM security, said, generate me a list. And what came out actually looked kind of interesting. That was more or less the list that we started with. And so it was a weekend project for one person and some artificial intelligence. Um, what we have now, again, you know, over 100 people actively contributing to it. And we have people from artificial intelligence companies. Uh, we have academics who've been working on neural networks for 20 years. Um, some of those people had never been involved in OWASP before, didn't have deep security backgrounds. On the other side, we have a lot of people um, who have been involved in OWASP for a long time, who deeply know security and AppSec, who didn't know a lot about artificial intelligence. And so I'd say we spent the first month just building some common ground for all these experts to come together and start to understand vocabulary and argue with each other a little bit. And um, and it's been fun to see it coalesce over several drafts where people are starting to use the the same language. Yeah, and, and that's a very interesting take where you are taking inputs from the people from different fields, not just from technology area, but from healthcare and so many other fields where it is going to be relevant for all of them as well. And especially, uh, the one thing that I loved about was the vocabulary very very important mm -hmm. i've been just reading through it and i am totally loving it it's it's been really interesting to see the debate and also some of the now that we've had some versions of the list out in public to see people who weren't involved in it commenting on it and sometimes when people are critical they say things like some of these entries don't sound like computer security they sound like psychology babble and i start to think well I think it's probably right that some of these security risks start to sound like psychology because we're working on things that are supposed to be simulating human brains. And when we get down to some of these really controversial entries, like we have these somewhat new terms that we've taken on like over-reliance and excessive agency. Um, you know, they're not things that had been on previous top 10 lists. They're not direct analogs of something from the web top 10 or the API top 10. But I think when you do start to think about sort of the, the level of humanness and organicness that come with these systems, I think it really helps to have some of these really phrased in those terms. And so we have things that are very direct analogs from previous top 10 lists. 
tests and things like prompt injection. Obviously, anybody in the OWASP community is going to look at that kind of print. And I think just developing that vocabulary so that we can start that discussion and talk about how do we mitigate those? Um, what are the best practices around them? That's been really interesting. Wow. So do you do any like a meetup or any working session or 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 any sort of a, a working session? Or is it just that people can contribute via the GitHub itself? Yeah, so we have um, we have a meeting every two weeks um, over Zoom. And, um, you know, we generally bring a set of business that will be about the first half of the meeting where we'll go over sort of the state of the list and what are the to do items and then we'll have about the other half of the meeting is is open discussion and you know the we've had anywhere from 30 to 40 people show up at these meetings to the first meeting i think we had 150 people on the zoom and and somehow we've managed to um keep it orderly and respectful and um uh so it's been really great so yeah people can jump in on those meetings um if they want to kind of have a face-to-face -face interaction um, also, there is a, an informal meetup being uh, planned for Black Hat DEF CON um, with some of the folks planning to get together in person there. Wow, I'm going to be there both at Black Hat and DEF CON, so I would love to know about it. And I'm sure a lot of uh, listeners would also love to know about it. So uh, for everyone, I will take the details from Steve and I would put it in the chat comments, uh, chat section so that everyone can join there and we can actually have like a good number of people there again maybe 150 200 or even more than that it's like a hacker summer camp so <laughs> yeah great awesome. so how, yeah and how exactly companies can sponsor uh, the project like uh, do you have anything in mind that do you want to get associated or what do you have in mind for the project so um let me just Share again here really quick. Um, so if you look at our contributors page, um, this is totally self-sourced on the wiki. So anybody who's contributing can come and, you know, sort of expose that they're involved in the project and they're welcome to link to their socials and everything like that. So you can see we have a lot of people who come in and endorse the project. Um, we've also invited people to list their organizations as supporting the project. And so we haven't yet um, asked for or requested formal sponsorships from any of these organizations. I think we've just been focused on doing the work and getting the 1.0 out. But um, mm -hmm. for organizations who want to get involved, I'd say the first thing to do here is list yourself as a supporter. Um, we are coming up on the, the 1.0 version of the list. We're planning to do some some PR to get it out there and get the word out. And if your organization would like to support it, um, we do have one of our members who's volunteered to be our volunteer PR person is coordinating um, various of these organizations who are putting out their own blogs and their own spin on the list that'll come out with our 1.0. So that's a good place to get started. And um, if your organization's interested in doing something more formal or, or deeper, you know, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or, um, or over the OWASP Slack if you're on that. Mm -hmm. That is totally, totally amazing. Thank you so much, Steve. It is such a wonderful project and uh, uh, this is something where people would love to contribute, organizations would love to contribute. And uh, hopefully that we would join the virtual meetups as well as in-person meetup as well. It is such a wonderful project. Thank you. Thank you for starting this off. Hey, thanks for having me. This is really great. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, everyone, for listening to the project. Do contribute to the project. It is very important that we drive such new initiatives, contribute towards it, and spread the word about it. So uh, we will come up with our next episode soon, but st stay tuned for that then. Thank you.